Make some noise. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us on this uh, amazing session. My name is Pablo Steiner. I'm going to be your host today. There's plenty of seats, so please come around. If you sit on the first row, you can take selfies with us after. All right. So today with me, I have Simon Crocker. Simon is an expert in cybersecurity. And we also have a very special guest, Ahmed Tayar. He's from Saudi Telecom. He's going to be sharing with us their journey. The reason I'm so excited about this talk is because we will share with you a journey of transformation and innovation. And we will do that in the next few minutes, and we will make it all sound very, very simple for you. The question is, are you ready? Yes. <laughs> all right. Ladies and gentlemen, Simon Crocker. Simon, you have been in the industry for a very long time. Yeah, You're an expert. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I've been with Cisco for 23 years now. Um, pretty much all that time in cybersecurity. Uh, the last seven or eight years I've been focusing on SOC. So I'm part of a team that help our customers throughout the world plan, design, build, assess, and optimize SOCs. So Simon, I talk to a lot of customers worldwide. They always ask me about SOC. And this is a topic on the table, and it means a lot of things yeah. for a lot of different people. So in the context of this presentation. Please tell us a little bit about what a SOC is. Sure, absolutely. So, let's have a look first at what a SOC actually does. A SOC or an STC, SOC or a CDC, Cyber Defense Sensor does. So, if we think of a typical organization, it's made up of networks, infrastructure, applications, and data. Now, there are threats out there to that organization. So, what does the organization do? It deploys security controls. Yeah, so firewalls in front of a data center, um, malware detection capabilities and endpoints, things like that. So those threats, one day, they're going to produce an attack. Yeah? So those security controls, your security controls are going to stop those attacks happening. When that happens, they're going to produce a log. Now some of your security controls might be detection security controls. So they're going to, when they stop something or detect something, they're going to produce an alert and say, yeah, I think, I think there's a bad thing happening here. So you get more attacks, more logs and alerts, more attacks, more logs and alerts. Now one day, an attack might get through your security controls, and it's in your networks and systems. So when that happens, the organization needs to collect data, and needs to collect logs to find out that's happening. And you get more attacks and more, more logs and alerts. Now, to be useful, those alerts, those logs, they need to go somewhere. Someone or something needs to pick them up. They need to be investigated. And they, if it really is an attack, they need to be responded to. And the collection of people, processes, and technology that does that, we call a SOC. So that's what a SOC does. Let's have a look at what's actually in a SOC. So first off, lots and lots of technology. Okay? So you're going to have some kind of security analytics, analytics system that's going to pull in all those logs and alerts and data and analyze that for you and set, you know, tell you about an attack. And you'll have threat intelligence platforms, automation tools, things like that. People. So security analysts, incident responders, threat intelligence analysts, things like that. And all this has to, to hang together and work together. So you'll find lots of process in a SOC. And finally, the whole thing needs to be governed. It needs to be looked after. It needs to be managed properly. And you'll find SOCs, they collect lots and lots of metrics and KPIs and things like that to help them do that. Now, with SOC, you must never lose sight of what it's there to do, which is to serve its consumers. And finally, most SOCs we see are what we call a hybrid SOC. Yeah? The SOC does some things itself, and other things it outsources to a, to a service provider. So that's, yeah, that's what, what a SOC does and what's in a SOC. Thank you, Simon. I love how this guy makes things complex so simple. <laughs> so, why is this then so complex for companies to implement? Yeah, so organizations, they do find this tough. They do find it challenging. And I guess one thing is this, this is a complex thing to look after. Yeah, it's a complex thing to do, and it all has to work in harmony to be successful. Those technologies you see there, they're very, very specialized technologies. Yeah, they're likely to be unique in your organization. Your, your IT department is unlikely to look after them. So it's up the SOC. The SOC has to look after them. Those people, those people are difficult to find, and when you've got them, they're difficult to retain. Yeah? And if your SOC's 24 by 7, and SOCs need to be 24 by 7, it's not just one team of people you need to find. It's five, six, seven teams of people to cover shift patterns and things like that. We've shown a very simple model of an organization here. 
green box with four boxes in. You know, in reality, organizations are much more complex. You know, tens of thousands of employees, tens of thousands of elements. Some of this stuff is likely to be out in the cloud. Um, and the number of attacks we've shown, just a handful of attacks. You think like someone like STC, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of attacks a day they're receiving, corresponding logs and alerts. Now, the SOC needs to deal with all this consistently at scale and at speed and accurately in order to protect the organization. Thank you, Simon. Thank you very much. So ladies and gentlemen, Simon will join us in a little bit moment. Now I want you to help me welcome Ahmed Tayar from Saudi Telecom. Welcome, Ahmed. Welcome. Nice to see you again. Nice to see Please, you. Please, let's have a seat. Well, first of all, I want to tell you thank you very much for doing this. I know your willingness to share your story and your journey with us has been incredible. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. It's a privilege to have you with us on stage. And thank you for allowing me to share our experience to every beautiful audiences here. Thank you. Excellent. So Ahmed, please uh, tell us a little bit about your role. You have a big role in the Cyber Defense Center. Please tell us a little bit about what that is. OK. So I am the Cyber Defense Center Director. We are responsible for uh, incident response, security operation center, and threat hunting. Um, basically, uh, it's well known by SOC. So every organization, they call it SOC, but we call it Cyber Defense Center because of the size and the uh, infrastructure that we have. Um, we are managing STC group, so to give an insight for STC. Uh, STC company is a Saudi uh, company operated in Saudi Arabia, and to, due to geolocation of Saudi Arabia, uh, it is reside on the middle and the center of the three continents, the Africa, Asia, and uh, Europe. And in addition to this one, so we provided as a STC, we provided submarine cables that we connect all these, con all these continents together, which allowing us that it will be difficult for us in order to ensure the security and privacy, not only for our nation or our company, but we are securing the whole world by due to this geolocation. And STC, it's considered also a digital enabler for, for the Saudi Arabia and the, also for the vision 2030 uh, of, this, of the kingdom. So this is a brief of STC and our role as a cybersecurity. We need to ensure the security of the STC in addition to this one, which is very important, the security all of the world itself. Fantastic. That uh, sounds like a simple job. <laughs> Adrenaline. <laughs> Excellent. So, um, Ahmed, this, um, for, for the audience and for you guys to be able to absorb this um, better, we're going to take them through your journey, then we're going to talk about some of the outcomes, and then finally we'll talk about the future. So that will be easier for you to follow during our conversation, and also for the million people that we have behind the cameras. Now, one thing I need to ask you is why did you decide to go through this transformation and why you choose Cisco and CX services to help you? Okay, so let me get back to you three years uh, ago. Uh, once we started our partnership with uh, Cisco. Three years ago, after exactly after the pandemic, we had one of the biggest transformation as STC from not becoming only a digital, uh, and a telecom services, we become more of digital services. So we, rather than we providing only a telecom services, we started to provide cloud services to our customer. We started to provide data centers. We provided uh, emerging technologies like uh, IoT, 5G, also AI analytics to our customer that we can analyze their data and bring Business, business value to their to our customers. On top of this one, and in order to achieve all of this, 
we started having another challenge to us as a cybersecurity. So what will happen with these, a lot of services and diversification from a business point of view, we, we had multiple infrastructure. Our infrastructure was really, really, really huge from in terms of assets, in terms of the data, in terms of even analyzing the data. So in order as a SOC, as Simon said, so in order we need to analyze the data, we're talking about terras and terras that is being feed into our SIM on a daily basis, which allowing us to change the technology. So we started by trans changing the technology and we brought a new technology, which our executive management, they decided, okay, after having a new technology, we need to ensure having a new people. So we started to choose a company and a partner where a strategic partner, and we were very selective, by the way. So these partner, they need to be very expertise in IT. In addition to this one, they are very expertise in telecom. And what do you think? <laughs> 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 Who can provide these two expertise in IT and telecom? And this is why we choose Cisco in the place. On top of this one, also they have the capability from cybersecurity point of view, uh, which one of the things that all of, and this is why we, we choose actually Cisco for having an IT, telecom, and cybersecurity all together. Uh, then after that, we started our journey in order to have a proper transformations out of that. Thank you, and we are very proud to be part of this uh, strategic partnership, by the way. Um, and along the way, I'm sure there was many outcomes that we were able to generate. So can you please tell us a little bit about that as well? Yes. So again, let, so let me uh, tell you after, after we started our partnership with, uh, with Cisco, uh, one, of the, one of the challenges that we faced um, is having huge number of data that it came across our SIM solution. And we spoke to Cisco that we need not a normal legacy security operation center to be managed and operated to our infrastructure, where we decided, let us build a strategy. And this is the first thing that we have done. We started by doing a maturity model where we want to see where we are. And during that time, three years ago, and please don't take picture after of it, we were one in maturity. And after three years, so now we become three, uh, sorry, four of, out of five in the maturity model within only three years. And this is one of the achievement that we have and the outcomes that we had. We started to build after we did the maturity and we found ourselves like one. Uh, we found ourselves, so let us build a certain framework and certain standardizations. Uh, this huge of data, uh, this is huge of data that it came across our uh, platform. It is really difficult to be monitored and managed. And with the, unless if we have, um, a huge number of people that they can manage and uh, operate our security operation center. So what we have done here, we started to build something called a use case framework. And this is another outcome that we have. The use case, uh, the use case framework, it's basically not everything has to be monitored. So we starting to selecting our crown jewels we are starting to, to identify our critical assets within the infrastructure and the millions and millions and thousands of assets that we have to select these critical assets. Then after that, we started to build a use case in order to monitor and ensure the security and privacy of our infrastructure. And this is, it came for the the next, after three years, now, after, as, as I said, we became, uh, we become actually four out of, uh, out of five. And this has brought us 
into the next uh, three years, and this is what's happened right now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's a fantastic, fantastic journey and outcomes. Now, when we talked about this is not the only thing we are going to do together, right? Yes. So what about the future? What, what does the future look like? Okay, so the future is good. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first thing. <laughs> uh, let me, so this is the trends. Uh, usually in the security operations center, they started I, by something called, as of now, they call the legacy security operations center, where we monitor, there is a data, there is logs, we monitor the logs, and that's it. We analyze it, and we provide a use case, and if there is something use case, we will, we will be creating use case, and we'll, there is alerts, and there is playbox that we want to ensure that to be followed by the L1 and L2, support. This is, you can say, the first level of security operations center. With four maturity, we reach two automations. We have around one, uh, almost like 30 automations, playbooks, of our, uh, of our playbooks. And these automations, it will ensure the automations of the response of our, uh, our security operating center. In order, this is in order to be to reach a maturity number four. But how, if we want to reach to num maturity number five, what we should do? We want to inject an AI. We want an AI not only to just to take and automate things, but we want also for our AI to starting thinking, respond based on the analyzing the data that we have. And this is this is our future. We want to ensure something, a framework that we call it AI SICOPS. And this is what we started to build by, uh, by Cisco. And this is AI SICOPS. They have a framework and they have its own LLM um, model, which will analyze the, uh, analyzing the data, analyzing the playbox, analyzing even the, uh, the, our, our documentations from security point of view, where it will build and it will have a proper actions and playbox based on the data they receive. This is first thing, this is one of the future that we want to, to build in the future. The second thing, which is something we call it cyber for business. And this is in order to ensure our security operation center is not only a normal security operation center, but we want it to be derived by business. We want to quantify our risks, we see an incident. What happened if this incident impacting this service, what is the quantifications of the attacks? We built a framework, we started actually, we started building a framework, something called the Cyber for Business. This Cyber for Business, what it will do, uh, do it has some kind of algorithm. Whenever there is an attack, we actually, we built and link this attack with quantifications and with the services, business services. So we can report to the board, we can report to executives that this is the impact that we received and that we saw. And based on this one, we are, this is, uh, and this is the impact that you will going to see uh, from, uh, from uh, uh, business point of view. Uh, as of today, uh, as of today, we, we ensure of all of our journey with uh, Cisco, we had the pleasure to invite around four companies, I think so. So um, uh, we have, I think, Oredo and different companies from telecom and IT. And for today, we are announcing, and you are more welcome for joining STC to seeing STC, CDC, Cyber Defense Center, and the Security Operation Center, and see their capabilities by leveraging Cisco, okay? <laughs> so you can reach Cisco and starting to communicate with, uh, with us in order to have an invitation to our, to our, uh, to our uh, center in Saudi Arabia, and you are more welcome. Everyone here, you are more welcome to reach to Cisco. <laughs> you, you will have I'm many sure, calls. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure I will get a million calls now. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, thank you very much welcome. for that offer. It's, it's fantastic. Um, to have you here in stage and to have this partnership. I'm sure in the audience, both physically and 
also behind the cameras. They're wondering how they can join us, be part of this journey. What would you recommend to them in a couple of minutes? OK, uh, as a recommendations, I uh, would like to, this is the summarizations of our journey. So every security operation center uh, leaders, uh, first thing, starting by performing a capability maturity model to baseline your, your capabilities from the security operating center. After that, once you see the gaps and the challenges that you have, uh, starting building a projects and roadmap in order to achieve uh, one year to three years goals and tactic and strategic goals that you have. Then after that, starting and thinking about how you can link your operations to business objectives. And this is the most important thing that everyone, they should uh, drive by this approach. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much. Again, thank you very much for the partnership. This has been an amazing experience. Great to have you on stage with us. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Ahmed Tayar. Thanks a lot. So Simon, I would like to bring you back to stage now. Sure. And since you can make things uh, complex, very simple, <laughs> tell us how, please. Sure. So we've heard about some um, great innovations there, great transformation at, at STC. Um, so how did, how did those innovations come about? How do we know they were required? And, and when we implemented those innovations, how do we know they're successful? You know, they, they, made, they made a difference. So, Cisco, we follow a six-step SOC transformational blueprint. And this is what we did at STC, and we've done that with, with many, many other countries, many other customers um, in the world. Um, there's no magic best practice with SOC. Yeah? All organizations that are in different situations have different requirements. But this works whatever type of SOC, region, region vertical. So first off, what does your SOC actually need to do? Yeah? Lots of SOCs we see are, are built bottom up. Yeah? They've kind of evolved over time. And it's often these SOCs that we see which are failing. So I'll, I'll give you an example. We were, we were talking to the CISO of an online gaming company this is a, a few years ago now. And he said, well, my SOC is useless. It doesn't, doesn't tell me what I need to know. And we said, well, as the, as the CISO of an online gaming company, what, what are you most interested in? He said, money laundering and identity fraud. Now, his SOC was collecting on the whole firewall logs. No amount of firewall logs you collect will tell you about money laundering or identity fraud. You need some very, to collect some very um, focused data, you need some very specialized tools, and you need people trained on those tools and how to investigate things to spot that happening. His SOC was collecting what it could, not what it needed it to, to do. So Cisco, we follow a, a top-down business-focused approach to SOC. So first off, we'll work with an organization, but what, what does your SOC need to do? What value does it need to provide to the business? Once we know that, we can work out what services it needs to provide in order to deliver that value. Once we know the services, so people process technology to deliver them. All this we roll up into a, a strategy, a SOC strategy. So as well as those services the SOC's going to deliver, we also document that strategy. You know? So what are the key drivers? Who are the consumers, the stakeholders? What's the scope of the SOC? What are the core principles it's going to operate under? What are the desired outcomes? Yeah? And all this we roll up into a, a three-year strategic roadmap. Next, how well is your SOC doing? Yeah? What parts can we reuse or evolve to align with that strategy? What, what do we need to build from scratch? What, what makes sense to outsource someone else to do? As we do this quantitatively, we can do this at the beginning, every year, and the end of three years. And this is when Ahmed said they went from one to four in that three years. You know, four is world class. Yeah? So that it really, really is you know, an amazing, amazing transformation. How do we know the SOC is doing what we want it to do? Yeah? So we need a governance structure in place. We need to collect those metrics and KPIs we talked about earlier. But those services we want the SOC to deliver, how do we know they're going to be delivered correctly? Yeah? And this is, of course, process. So the process not only defines when the service starts or when a part of the service, the service starts and who does what and when, but also where do we take those measurements that roll up into those metrics and KPIs. Um, with STC, we've done a lot of pro work on processes, and the processes give you that maturity and that capability. Lots of process workshops, and that's how we've got from one to four. 
what should your sock actually be looking for? Yeah, so again, most socks, when they start out, they concentrate on the security controls they've deployed. You know, that, that alert coming in for that malware found on that endpoint. So what a SOC does, or should do, is create a process to deal with that alert. Yeah, so how do we investigate it? How do we decide that it is an alert, um, is, is an attack? Um, and how do we respond? And a SOC, we call that a playbook. A SOC world, we call that a playbook. Now, as SOCs mature, and they, they should definitely be doing that on the controls, but as a SOC matures, it starts to think about, well, what is the business interested in? Yeah, think back to the online gaming company example. Yeah? And this is where the use case framework comes in that, that Ahmed mentioned. And you can think of the use case framework as a, as a giant process or set of processes that takes us from those business level use cases, which could be from maybe threats we're interested in. Yeah? You know from your threat intelligence that the other telecoms provider in your re providers in your region have been hit by some kind of attack. Do we, should we be worried about that attack? Do we want to detect that attack? Yeah, if so, it becomes a business level use case, or it could be to do with risk. As I mentioned, they've, they've found what, you know, their critical assets, let's, let's detect around those, or it could be for compliance reasons. So that's the use case framework. Right, so we know what our SOC should be doing. We know how well it's doing, we know what it's doing, we've got control over it. We know what we're looking for. The next step is to optimize the SOC. Now, all SOCs have to keep on improving. If they don't, they'll eventually fail. Why? The world outside there is changing. Yeah? Your attack surface is always constantly changing. The number of attacks out there is increasing. The complexity of attack those attacks are increasing. The number of threat actors is increasing. Yeah? If your SOC just stays still, it'll eventually be overwhelmed. So we need to keep improving. So you know, your people who work in your SOC, yeah? give them all the tools they need, train them. AI for SecOps, as, as Ahmed mentioned, make their, make their lives easier. Those processes, optimize those processes. That technology you've got in there, yeah? Add more data sources based on your use cases, of course. Optimize that technology, add more technology. Integrate that technology together so it all works together. And of course, innovate. And this is where some of these innovations come from. You know, we've got a big data lake. Let's use machine learning to hunt on that. On that. Um, and of course, something all SOCs want to do is automate. Yeah? Help them do things consistently at speed and at scale. And as I mentioned, you know, been automating whole you know, life cycle of events from detecting it right through to response, SDC. So how do we ensure our SOC keeps improving? Okay, so this is all about putting a strong governance structure in place collecting those metrics and KPIs, and also reporting, having strong reporting of those KPIs, yeah? So you can interpret them, see how well your SOC's doing. To instill a very strong culture of continual improvement. Keep improving, yeah? Those processes you've gone to great pains to put in, have a look at the steps. How can we speed part of it up? If you collected more data or had an innovation, would that improve things, yeah? Or, or one of the innovations we've, we've talked about. So, we're at set, step six. Have we finished? No. No, it's time to revisit step one, review the strategy, and around the circle we go again. Thanks. I'm out of time. Simon, <laughs> thank you very much. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, Simon. So, um, Cisco CX Services, we are helping secure, defend everything. It's a true story, it's a true journey. If you're thinking about where can you start or what can you do about it, come and talk to us. We're gonna be around for a while. Yes, we can take selfies, but at the same time, we can really talk to you about what is it that we're doing and where to start. In the CX stand, then you can also, there are my engineers are in there. We can show you truly how this works. You can see some of these things in action. So please make sure you do that. The last thing that I want to tell you is a massive thank you. Third day in Cisco Live. Hope this was your best session. Thank you very much for coming.